the Oregon District Attorneys Association and myself um, are, uh, are very proud to announce that we have been spending a lot of time and attention to the issues surrounding um, jury verdicts and the nature of unanimous jury verdicts versus non-unanimous. Certainly, as an organization, we believe in a fair and just criminal justice system. And we, we, and I say myself and members of the Oregon District Attorneys Association, we stand emphatic and firm in our shared belief that racism, bias, prejudice, and discrimination simply cannot play a role in the criminal justice system. And nor uh, do we believe, and with that premise, we believe that laws that are built um, on the premise of racism need to be carefully examined. They need to be uh, changed if we can and should. And we, as an organization, and I personally, believe that uh, Oregon's jury verdict um, nature, as, it, as it's reflected in Article 1, Section 11, it's time for a change. The background uh, as it relates to the genesis of um, 302, right, in the early 30s, it appears by the historical review to have a foundation premised in racism, anti-Semitic um, uh, belief systems and repercussions. That appears to be the history. And so when I earlier said that laws that are premised on the foundation of racism, prejudice, and bias ought to be looked at critically and changed, uh, that's what I'm talking about. And we want each and every voice of a juror that's been asked to spend their time, energy on these very important concepts and questions um, to be heard. Each juror's voice should be heard. We think that uh, uh, that's that part of that balance of having a victim's vo voice be heard, the defendant's voice be heard, either through directly through themselves if they choose to be heard or through their defense counsel. Um, and certainly the state needs to be heard as well yeah, we may have a few more hung juries, all right? We may, may or may not have to try a case again, either because it was tied up one way or the other relative to a vote. Um, that may occur, but, at the, but when it's all said and done, um, we need the, the community, we need, we need the community and all of our partners to know that we have done our best to uh, eliminate the notion that there was bias prejudice uh, within any verdict any verdict at all. We need to emphasize and embrace the notion that every juror who gives their time to this important uh, process, their voice is going to be heard. We're going to insist that it be heard. Do I expect strong pushback from the ODA leadership? No, I don't. Um, as Matt remarked, uh, individual prosecutors, there are 36 of us, um, may or may not agree on every, every aspect. Um, and there's room for that. There's room for that conversation. I can tell you this, and, I, and I've tried to make it clear. Um, the ODA, as an organization, um, as a consensus group of voters within the organ organization, have enthusiastically um, uh, embraced the executive board of the Oregon District Attorneys Association to move forward and do just what we're talking about doing.